Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is April and today's video is going to be on nutritional assessment. So whether we're caring for clients with acute or chronic conditions or whether we're just trying to help a client maintain their health, being able to assess their nutritional status is really important. So let's start with diet history. Really important when we first start talking with a client about nutrition that we get a good understanding of what are the usual foods and fluids that the client eats and drinks. Are they taking any nutritional supplements? What medications are they taking that might be interfering with their appetite, making it um, suppressed or making them eat more food? How satisfied are they with their diet? Do they feel like they are doing pretty well from a health perspective eating or do they feel like they have opportunities for improvement? And then also any foods that the client needs to avoid due to allergies or, or foods that the client has as a preference. So what are the things that they gravitate to that they are more likely to eat? There are many, many clinical manifestations of inadequate nutrition, such as dry, brittle hair, skin that is dry, especially with dry patches, lack of subcutaneous fat. We might also see vital sign changes, such as an irregular heart rate and rhythm uh, or drop in the blood pressure, especially if we have a fluid volume deficit or a dehydration, an enlarged spleen or liver just generalized weakness that could be from iron deficiency anemia or some other type of anemia and also impaired coordination due to neurological involvement that we can sometimes see when we're not getting in particular enough B vitamins. Now, we always want to be assessing a client's height and weight as part of a nutritional assessment. So weight, of course, we want to be weighing the client at the same time every day, especially if they're in the hospital or if we're trying either to gain or lose weight. We want to weigh them in similar clothing and using the same scale. And then we need to keep in mind that daily fluctuations in weight are generally indicative of water weight changes. And that's important. So especially if you have a client that has a fluid volume overload or a fluid volume deficit and you're weighing them every day, one kilogram of weight is equivalent to 1000 milliliters of fluid. So those daily fluctuations in weight, that's a really good indicator of what a uh, water weight gain or loss. Now, when we do height, we do want to make sure that we remove the client's shoes, that they are standing straight up and tall with their heels together, and that um, remembering that for young children, we do need to do a recumbent measurement, so they're lying flat, so for infants and very young children. So starting somewhere around the age of two, maybe three years of age, we can stand those children up to take their height. Okay, BMI. Now, you know, we can't get out of a conversation about nutritional assessment without talking about BMI. You do need to know how to calculate BMI. So you can use weight uh, in kilograms divided by height, and that height is going to be in meters squared, or you can take the number 703 and multiply it by the weight in pounds and then divide it by the height in inches squared. So you have two options, um, depending on whether you really wanna work with either meters and kilograms or pounds and inches. So again, you can see the kilogram and meters squared calculation on the screen. If you want to use the other measurement, it's the number 703 times the weight in pounds divided by the height in inches squared. And so when we calculate our body mass index, there are five categories. So underweight is gonna be a client whose BMI is less than 18 and a half. Normal is gonna be a client whose BMI is 18 and a half to 24.9. Overweight, 25 to 29.9. And then obese, anything over 30. But then we do consider those with a BMI greater than 35 to be extremely obese. So really important that you can classify a client's BMI um, based on their height and weight. Okay, other clinical values that we want to look at for nutritional assessment. So fluid intake is really important. Um, both men and women should intake about two to three liters per day of fluid. Now remember that doesn't just have to be water. There's fluid in the foods that we eat many of the foods that we eat and other fluids count as well. 
Um, so it doesn't just truly have to be two to three liters of water, although the majority of that should be water. The average output of an adult is going to be 1,700 to 3,000 milliliters per day. So you can very quickly see if we're going to put out that much fluid, we need to take in around that much fluid in order to maintain our fluid balance. Protein levels are really important when we think about nutritional assessment. So our serum pre-albumin is our best indicator of acute nutrition changes. So a normal pre-albumin would be 15 to 36 milligrams per deciliter. And pre-albumin in particular is what we use to measure the effectiveness of TPN. So if you have a client on total parenteral nutrition, then that serum pre-albumin is a really important um, weekly or maybe even several times a week measurement. Serum albumin is another protein assessment. So a normal is going to be three and a half to five, although it does not necessarily reflect those acute changes like the pre-albumin does. Nitrogen balance is also important. So um, when we eat proteins, of course, proteins have nitrogen in them. And so a neutral balance of nitrogen means that we have adequate nutrition. However, a positive balance of nutrition, we often see during recovery from an illness. Um, pregnancy is a state of positive balance. Also when we're growing, so children, um, school-aged children, adolescents all have a positive nitrogen balance. That's because of the growth they're experiencing. Negative nitrogen balance, however, is most of what we deal with as nurses with adults. And we see negative nitrogen balance during illness, but also during malnutrition and starvation. Okay, really um, important topic. So the nutritional screening, as nurses, we do a nutritional screening. So a lot of times we think, oh, the dietitian's gonna do that, or that's not our responsibility, but actually it is. So according to the Joint Commission, within 24 hours, I'm sorry, within 48 hours of hospital admission, a client needs to have a basic nutritional screening and that is done by the nursing staff, the registered nursing staff. It's usually part of our admission assessment, but again, within 48 hours of that hospital admission, we are required to do a basic nutritional screening. Now from that screening, referrals may be given to dietitians, registered dietitians, who then may need to come and assess the client further. However, that basic nutritional screening, it's usually only a handful of questions on your admission assessment. That is our requirement or our responsibility as a registered nurse. From that nutritional screening, we might do a more detailed nutritional assessment, um, which is affectionately known as the ABCD. So anthropometric measurements, biochemical measurements, clinical measurements, and dietary measurements. So let's look a little bit closer at that ABCD nutritional assessment. So the anthropometric assessments are going to be our simple non-invasive techniques. We've already talked about two of them, height and weight, but we also might do head circumference, especially on a young child. Skin fold thickness is another really important anthropometric assessment and then waist circumference. So these are numbers that when we think about nutrition, you really need to understand. Just as important as BMI is waist circumference. So males waist circumference should be less than 40 inches. And in females, it should be less than 35 inches. Less than 40 and less than 35 is considered indicative of a normal weight for an adult. When we think about biochemical assessments, remember that there is no single test available for nutrition. We did talk about serum albumin and prealbumin as being good indicators of protein intake. Um, however, there is no one specific blood test that we can do related to nutrition in general. Um, although there is some other testing that may be appropriate for clients, maybe we're looking at hemoglobin and hematocrit and red blood cells because the client has an iron deficiency um, anemia. Maybe the client um, has uh, a deficit in calcium or vitamin D, and so we want to test for those specific nutrients. So very specific testing might be done based on the vitamin or the mineral that you're concerned about. However, um, there is just no single test that will tell us about nutritional status. From a clinical assessment, we talked about that um, diet assessment already, but then we might do things like medical history, social history, a good physical exam, looking for those clinical manifestations of 
malnutrition. And then we've already talked about the dietary intake. So sometimes you'll see that called a 24 hour food recall. And that's where we actually ask the, the client to tell us everything that they ate and drank for a, the last 24 hour period. We might also have the client keep a food diary. So maybe over the course of a week or maybe even a month, they're jotting down the things that they're eating on a daily basis and they're bringing that record back in for us to assess. And then we also might do kilocalorie counts. Now we can break that down even further and we can look at uh, macronutrients. So our carbohydrates, our proteins and our fats specifically, or we might look at an overall calorie count. Okay guys, so that's all that I have for nutritional assessment. We went over several, several good assessments that do really help you understand the nutritional status of your client. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. You can certainly leave a comment down below, or you can contact me via my email address or my Twitter account. Now, if you're not following me on Twitter, I do post every weekday on Twitter. I do test-taking strategy tips, NCLEX style questions with answers and rationales, daily inspiration. So if you're not following me on Twitter, please take the opportunity to go over there and check out the things that I'm posting. And always remember that there is a case study or study guide that goes along with each of these videos, which can be found in my Etsy shop. And I will provide the link down below to my Etsy shop as well. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.